Hello everyone, I'm so glad you're joining me. Thanks for stopping by and watching this video. Today I'm going to be sharing two different techniques and five cards, all which feature Tim Holtz's brand new Distress Color, which is Lost Shadow. Now I know you probably look at this color and it's like, well, that's gray, what am I going to do with that? I have to tell you, this gray is, I think, the best gray out of all the colors in the Distress line for a neutral because it is a true gray it's a really nice color, it's light, kind of reminds you of Simon Says Stamps Fog cardstock. It's a good base gray. And the other thing I'm really excited about it, though I did not do it in today's video, is that I think this is going to be another great option for no line watercoloring or no line distress watercoloring because I think this will blend really, really well with cooler tones. Sometimes when you use antique linen, you'll get a bit more of a warmer touch and I think this one will be a good alternative for those cooler colors. But why don't we talk about what we're going to do today. I wanted to try out the Distress Paint color with some of my other Distress Paints in my stash. And I ended up finding a really fun technique when I paired the paint with white glossy cardstock from Simon's Stamp. So I have the white glossy cardstock here and I've picked out a whole bunch of different Distress colors to go with Lost Shadow. I played around and grabbed different colors and mixed and matched. So, but generally these were the colors I used throughout all of my backgrounds. We're gonna start first with the coral colors. I used Abandoned Coral and also Saltwater Taffy with Lost Shadow and also some Speckled Egg. So I have two grayish colors and then two bright coral colors. These are gonna look really pretty when you start mixing these together. I was really trying to be careful because I wasn't sure if this was gonna turn into mud, but it ended up working out really, really well. So I put down the coral first and then I started bringing in speckled egg and also lost shadow. And I'm using my finger to apply this. You could use a paintbrush if you want, but I do like the sporadicness of using your finger. I'm going to just mix these colors, let them do their thing, and I then set that paper aside to dry. And I'll repeat this on another sheet with now some blue colors. So I have blues and teals and of course also lost shadow. When I'm doing the finger painting, I'm not really focused on letting the colors not blend. So sometimes you'll see me actually grab another color with the same finger. I actually liked how that worked. It ended up allowing me to get some other colors in between, which was kind of fun. This glossy cardstock, of course, is a surface that has a coating on it. So which means the paint's not going to dry the same way it would on something like watercolor paper. So this did take quite a bit of time to dry. I actually let all these backgrounds dry overnight before I even attempted to make cards with them. So why don't we jump onto that part of the video? We're going to make some cards with the backgrounds that I just showed you how I made. So now I have these dried backgrounds. And by the way, there's no texture with this paint. Like it is smooth as silk. You don't even know that it's actually made from paint. So I'm gonna use a background die here from Simon Says Stamp. This is just a basic rectangle and it's slightly smaller than an A2 card. And I picked out where on my background I wanted to cut this paper. And then I used foam tape to attach it onto my card. Then I pulled out this pointed evergreen. I die cut it from some matte silver cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. And this is gonna get attached down along the bottom portion of my card. But I do want it to have some dimension, so I'm going to layer the silver piece on top of two other white die cuts cut from the same die. And I'll stack these together with some liquid glue, so that way this will now have some nice dimension off of my card. To ground the trees, I did cut a strip of gray cardstock, and I'm just going to glue this down along the bottom portion of my panel, and then the trees will get set right up against it. So now they don't look like they're floating. I didn't want to make this a super wintry card. I wanted this to be something that I could send year round. So I'm putting some fairy jewels and clear droplets in the background. And in my mind, it could go two ways. It could be snow or it could be stars. So that doesn't make this a seasonal card, which I really liked. I used some liquid glue to attach those clear droplets because they didn't have adhesive on the back of them, but the fairy jewels do, so they actually will just stick right down onto your card, which makes assembly really easy. For a sentiment, I pulled out a Thinking of You sentiment. This was randomly pulled out of some pre-made sentiments I had already stamped and embossed, so I don't know what stamp set it came from, but any simple single line greeting would work for this card. So I just have that on black cardstock. It's white heat embossed and it looks really pretty 
on top of those trees. Clean, simple, this would be a great masculine card. And like I said, without making any snowflakes or anything in the background, this allows the card to be used year round so it doesn't feel overly wintry. Next, I went a bit brighter and we're going to add some Distress Oxide ink blending onto some die cut flowers and leaves and create a really nice bouquet at the bottom of our background. So I'm using this etched layered daisy die. It's two pieces and we're going to ink blend them to add some color. I'm using Lost Shadow to color in the center of the daisy and then I'll bring in Wild Honey on the petals and I will let that blend a little bit with the Lost Shadow to get that nice transition between the two colors. I'm going to be ink blending both die cuts. We have this layer here that has the center detail and then if you notice the other one does not and that's because this layer is behind our main focal die cut and this is going to add additional petals around the petals in the front. So I'm actually going to use foam squares to attach these two pieces to give a little lift off of the petals in the back. In addition to the petals, we're also going to die cut and ink blend some leaves. These are the rose leaf dies from Simon's Stamp and I'm using Rustic Wilderness to ink blend the color onto these pieces. I am also using Simon's Stamp's small blending brushes because these pieces are a little bit on the smaller side and I didn't want to get too heavy handed and overpower my coloring with a larger brush. So using something smaller, even though it takes a tad bit more time to ink blend the pieces, it allows me to have more control. Thomas, of course, saw a bird, so he decided walking across my desk was the fastest way to go see that. So he passed by as I was working on putting together my pieces. I'm going to attach, like I said, that flower with some foam squares, and then I also used a foam square to attach it to my card itself. You'll notice that this background was cut down to be slightly smaller than my card, so I used that same rectangle die that we used earlier to do that. All of the leaves I also used foam tape to attach down. It adds a nice bit of dimension, and I'm actually using thin 3D foam squares, so this card isn't going to be as bulky as you think. These thin 3D foam squares are half the thickness of a regular foam square, which is really nice. Now I planned on die cutting the fiddly leaf die from Simon's Stamp, which by the way is super delicate. So I was worried about ink blending on that die cut piece. So instead of ink blending, I'm actually going to color my cardstock with Uncharted Mariner, which is one of the paint colors I used, of course. This oxide color, I created basically my own cardstock with it. So we colored the cardstock with that ink and then I die cut afterwards. You can see how teeny tiny and delicate these leaves are. I was worried I was gonna bend them by ink blending. So this was my alternative method for adding that color and still allowing me to have that same look across all my pieces. So they're all made from the oxide ink so they all look generally the same in style. For a greeting, I pulled out the fancy birthday die from Simon's Stamp and I've stacked two white pieces together and then finally I will put a third layer on top of that that I die cut from some matte silver cardstock, also from Simon's Stamp. These are going to get stacked together and then adhered straight on to the top portion of my card here to balance out all the stuff we have at the bottom. Of course, I need to finish off the greeting. It says right now just birthday, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I added a small sentiment strip that I had in my stash to finish off the greeting. So it says happy birthday. And I used some of those same fairy jewels and clear droplets that I used on the first card to add some decoration to this one as well. I decided to give a little bit more interest to the coral background that we created by adding a layer of paste. This is always fun to do. So I have my card here and the floating leaf stencil from Simon's Stamp. I've picked out a clear glitter paste. This happens to be Fallen Snow from Brutus Monroe. And I'm going to apply that paste through the stencil, but in a more sporadic manner. I'm not trying to cover this 100% perfectly. This background has a very loose feel to it. So I wanted the stenciling to feel the same way. So I applied that paste on top of my background and let it dry. It took about an hour, I would say, to do so. And then once it did dry, I brought in my greeting, which is the Love You So Much die. I actually cut this from Simon Says Stamps Mirrorball cardstock. It's a super cool, almost holographic, but kind of a shattered glass effect too. It's a really neat cardstock that has a silver tone, but will pick up other colors when it catches the light. So I've stacked a few greetings together. This is two layers of white and then finally the mirror ball on top. And I used liquid glue to adhere this down on top of my background. 
I kept the card really simple because there's a lot going on. And the only thing I'm going to add for an embellishment is this tiny little heart from the Nested Rounded Hearts die set. I die cut it from Simon Says Stamp blue glitter cardstock and then I stuck it right down underneath the sentiment, which finished things off and tied in that teal throughout the card really, really well. All right, we're gonna change gears now and go on to technique number two, which is oxide ink smushing. I love to ink smush. I've done many videos on ink smushing. I'll link to one in the top right corner if you wanna check it out. I'm going to show you what I did to make two cards out of one background, so this is fun. We're gonna start first by ink smushing onto some Distress Watercolor cardstock. I'm using a clear pocket to hold the ink as I work with it. Some people like to put it on their craft mat, like their glass mat that I'm working on, but I have problems with not being able to see where the ink is going. I don't like having that little control of over my background. So by putting the ink on a clear pocket like this, I have full control of where I'm placing the ink as best as I can, of course, always with distress oxide smushing or distress ink smushing in general, you're never really gonna be able to control it perfectly. But this does allow you to maintain some of that control with the placement. So I used a few different colors. We had Lost Shadow to start, Uncharted Mariner was the second. Now I'm adding Stormy Sky. And finally, for a bit of contrast, I put in a little bit of black soot, but I did that one a lot more sporadically. I didn't want too much of that black soot in there. So I actually made a couple of these backgrounds and one of them is here, it's completely dry. And I'm going to die cut it with the Chunky Hearts die from Simon Says Stamp. I'm gonna die cut this right in the center of my panel. I'm going to try to keep the hearts inside of the negative spaces because here's what we're gonna do. I'm putting the background panel on its backside now and I'm covering every one of the hearts that were still inside of the paper with foam squares. Now there's a few that fell out and we'll fix that but this is going to help me attach all these hearts fairly quickly onto my A2 card. So I've now laid that on top and we're gonna carefully press all those hearts through the negative areas of our panel. Then we can remove that panel and reveal all the hearts mostly intact. And before I did remove the panel, I added in any of the hearts that had fallen out the first time. So here we go, we have all our hearts perfectly aligned on this card, it looks fantastic but we still have that other piece. Well, that's where we're gonna make our second card. So I'm gonna cover the backside of this panel too with some foam tape. And then I can stick this onto a white A2 card and we'll now have two cards out of one background. So you can save all of your leftovers for a really neat contrasting look, but we're gonna make these cards look fairly similar by adding the same greetings and the same types of decoration. I picked out this swoopy love you die from CZ Design and Simon Says Stamp die cut it from some black cardstock and stacked those greetings together to make it a little bit more dimensional. I did use the shadow layer and die cut that from some white and I laid that on top of my hearts. This background is looking fantastic, but I decided to add a little bit more embellishment by using some of that same blue glitter cardstock that we used earlier and I die cut one of those chunky hearts from it so that way I could have one single heart stand out amongst all the others. And so as you can see, I repeated that same look on the other card that uses the negative of our background. So there we go. I have covered quite a bit in this video. I hope it has been inspiring. We got two different techniques and five cards out of all this. So hopefully something in this video will spark your creativity and you will try some of this out. If you're interested in any of the products that I'm using today, I do have them linked below in the video description or over on my blog, including links to the Lost Shadow Color. The Lost Shadow Color is available, of course, in Distress Inks, Oxides, Paints, Embossing Glaze, and more. So all of the usual Tim Holtz products are available in this new color. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I can't wait to come back and share more with you. But until then, I hope you have a wonderful day, and thanks for watching.